Off the coast of Australia, more than a thousand offshore oil and gas wells serviced by nearly 70 platforms and other facilities are about to shut down. And when that happens, they're all expected to be removed from the water. It's the first time Australia's relatively young industry has had to do this at scale, and it will take a lot of cash. There's a lot of this to be removed. There's around about $50 billion worth of work to undertake over the next 25 years. That's got the fossil fuel giants thinking about ways to minimise costs. And one way is to, well, not remove the rigs at all. Research done in collaboration with the fossil fuel industry suggests leaving old rigs in the water could save companies a lot of money, about $25 billion over the next 25 years, around half of the cost of removing them. But it does sound a bit like dumping trash in the ocean, right? No, look, I categorically reject that. I mean, what we do is we look at the science and say, does this deliver a good environment, environmental outcome for the marine ecosystem? You know, what's happening in terms of fish life? And here's the thing. There's a bunch of research suggesting disused oil rigs might actually help the environment. The idea is they can become artificial reefs for sea life. It's called rigs to reef. They've become hotspots for marine life. So fish and vertebrates, marine mammals. Some of the highest densities of fish in the world are now found on offshore oil and gas structures, which now complicates this question of whether they should be removed or left in place. In the Gulf of Mexico in the US, more than 500 rigs have been left in place, creating the largest artificial reef in the world. And they're a bit like um, high-rise accommodation, high-rise apartment buildings, you know, just full of uh, corals, mussels, fish, sponges, marine mammals and so on. But it's not all upside. And you see a lot of fish there. You, the instant thing people think is, oh, that's got to be a good thing. But it could well be that those rigs, which might be located near natural areas, are drawing fish off to there where they might be more easily caught or damaged. But also it's been shown that invasive species use these as a way to travel further than they would have otherwise travelled. And because of that, conservationists are gearing up for a fight. If you have ever seen a plastic bottle or uh, a shopping trolley sitting at the bottom of, of the harbour, you'll find some mollusks attached to it. And, you know, those are, those are life forms that are, that are living there. But we wouldn't say that um, that means any structure that you dump in the ocean that gets life attached to it is overall good for the environment. All this is coming to a head right now with a proposal by Australia's biggest oil company, Woodside. But its rig to reef isn't being presented so much as a choice, more a necessity. Here's the story. In 2006, Woodside started extracting oil off the coast of West Australia using its brand new Niagara floating oil facility. It's like a big ship that stores and processes oil before it gets transported elsewhere. At one end of it is what's called a riser turret mooring, or RTM. It's 83 metres long, 12 metres wide, and extends from the surface down towards the seafloor. At the bottom of it is a compartment which Woodside filled with mud to weigh it down. When the oil stopped flowing in 2018, the plan was to empty that compartment and float the RTM so it could be towed to shore and recycled. But it turned out Woodside couldn't come good on that plan. Woodside said design mistakes and a failure to properly maintain it meant the compartment couldn't be emptied, so towing wasn't practicable. So Woodside made a new plan to drag the RTM to a spot much closer to Ningaloo Coast World Heritage Area, sink it to about 160 metres and attach 49 concrete modules to it. Then all of that stuff would become inhabited by sea creatures and recreational fishers could have a field day. And that plan's received its first approvals. Professor David Booth is one of Australia's most experienced researchers on rigs to reefs but he wasn't particularly impressed with Woodside's environmental plan. So my argument is, you know, it, you, you're fiddling with nature um, rather than improving habitat. So putting something there, I do have some concerns with that for sure. Others go much further. Tina Solomon Hunter is an expert in oil regulation. So what is happening here with Woodside is really extraordinary. They're taking it somewhere else to scuttle it. And, and, and to bury it, to, to, to sink it. This is really the first time in, in 20 years, 25 years that this has happened. And 
Previous experience and examples show us that this is not acceptable conduct. She says the government must reject it. Everything really should be removed unless it's impossible to remove it. Woodside argues the proposal is in line with all Australian and international law. Federal Environment Minister Susan Lee said her department is committed to effectively implementing the London Protocol and upholding strong environmental standards for any application under the Sea Dumping Act. Conservationists have had a few specific worries about the plan too. Key is 65 cubic metres of polyurethane foam in this part of the RTM. Woodside said it wasn't practicable to remove the foam, so they got approval to wait until the RTM sinks to the sea floor, where the water pressure will cause the foam to shrink. Then they will encase it in grout. They said it will take up to 400 years to disperse into the environment. But when the ABC contacted Woodside and asked about this, they revealed they had changed their mind and it was now practicable to remove the foam. And that was now the latest plan. But despite that, they still claimed it was not practicable to remove the whole structure as originally planned. At Woodside, we believe success comes from doing what's right, even when it's not easy. Woodside wouldn't do an interview and the Australian Petroleum Production and Exploration Association, APIA, wouldn't comment on the specific proposal. In a statement, Woodside said the artificial reef is expected to provide a range of social, economic and ecological benefits, with the design and location being optimised with the aim of creating a reef that becomes a productive marine habitat. She said leaving it in the water isn't saving the company money. But with $25 billion to be saved by leaving oil rigs in the water, Woodside's proposal might be one of the first of its kind in Australia. It won't be the last.